Hello and welcome back to the For The Property Investor podcast. And today we've got another buyer's agent with us, someone who I've known um, for quite a while in on and off, but um, uh, we've randomly met through the industry a number of times over the last 20 years. So um, that makes me feel very old. But um, um, today we have Valeria Davis. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Hi, Owen. How are you going? Long yeah, time pretty, I've seen. Yes, I know. And uh, I do have to say, no relation, but, uh, you know, because you do have a fantastic last name. So, um, um, <laughs> but, um, yes, no relation. But, um, um, Valeria, it was, it's great having you on the podcast today uh, to talk all things uh, property and, and uh, property investment. And um, uh, tell us a bit about um, uh, what you do now. Um, but also how you started in the industry. Right. Okay. I started in the industry in my 20s um, to begin with. I was at Ray White. Um, and I remember back in those days, we're talking 30 years ago, back in those days, there wasn't a lot of training. You were just given um, just given a, a bunch of tools and told to go out there and go and get some um, listings. And uh, I remember my boss, Danny, saying to me the very first day, right, so I want you to go out, get an auction um, signed up. I'd like you to get some marketing funds and I'd like you to get, um, um, I want you to go out to this listing presentation by yourself and come back with with them signed up. And I went, okay, not not really understanding what I was getting myself into, came back with the, the, the listing signed up with an auction agreement and with marketing funds. And he went, how did you do that? And I said, well, that's what you told me to do. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes having not a clue what you're doing works for you, but obviously it doesn't really work that way. I was just lucky and passionate. I think that's that's what comes across, that I was passionate. Very good. And, and that, was the big, that was the beginning of my career. Um, I worked there for a few years before moving out of real estate for a short time and then coming back again into real estate um, when my uh, kids were little. So um, out in the Kenthurst Jewel area, so I was selling, I had my own agency uh, selling uh, rural properties. Okay. Um, and, and for all the uh, listeners' sake, that was, that's, in, that's in the um, sort of semi-rural northwest region of Sydney. So. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, which is only probably these days 30 minutes on um, the, the highway, um, 30 minutes from Sydney Central. Yeah. So beautiful part, beautiful part of the world. It is, it is. Um, I'd very much uh, love to be uh, back in that area myself. But um, um, So now I'm a buyer's agent. Yep. So um, I converted from being a selling agent. Um, I, I found that I naturally gravitated towards the buyers um, only if, if I couldn't find a buyer a property and I could see that they were ready to go, they were cashed up or they were um, in, they had their money in place, I, I tended to then look outside of my listings and see if I could find them a property. I'd approach other agents. I worked very well with other agents in the area and would ring them up and say, hey, do you have a property? I've got someone who needs X, Y, Z. Mm. And I would inevitably find those buyers a property either um, through a conjunction with that other agent or even just refer them on to, onto the agent. There was no yeah. such thing as a buyer's agent back in those days. No. And so, so when I came back into the industry this time, I was like, I'm not going to be a selling agent. I want to help the buyers. Hence, House Hunters um, is my company name and where, you know, where that came from. Fantastic. And uh, so you've been doing that for uh, what, a couple of years now. And, um, yeah, post-COVID. Yeah, and you're, um, and you're based in the Sydney Eastern Suburbs? My office is in Potts Point. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the Eastern Suburbs the Lower North Shore, which I've spent the last 25 years in the Lower North Shore, um, 20 years, sorry, in the in that Mossman, Cremorne Point, Neutral Bay yep. area. 
um, and and now the the east. So using my experience um, with property um, and and the locations is where I'm concentrating in. But I've been doing some work in Newcastle as well recently in that okay. Lake Macquarie area, as well as um, as well as the the hills, which is where I'm from. And, and also the Sutherland Shire too now. So basically it doesn't take long to become an expert with the tools that we have in the industry, as you know. Yes, of course. Yeah. And um, and uh, in a lot of those, uh, a lot of those clients that you're helping, um, they're owner occupiers as well as investors? Yeah, they are. So a lot of upsizes and downsizes. And, and with the downsizing, people are finding that they've got extra cash that they can either put into shares or they can buy a second property. Um, Airbnb properties are pretty, um, you know, people are asking me, um, can they have like a, a secondary property that they can Airbnb when they're not there? So that city country thing is still happening. You know, remember the exodus that we had um, with COVID where people oh, yes. were coming up and then moving into, you know, the, the doing a tree change or a, or a, a sea change. Mm. Um, well, now they're combining the two a lot. Um, so keeping their city place, which is usually s smaller, I guess, a city place, and then moving out to the northern beaches or even up to the central coast or up to Newcastle and having that dual lifestyle. So, um, and that's exciting. That's really fun. <laughs> Uh, very good. It's it seems like you're enjoying um, enjoying the the new role in the industry. I am. Yes. Yeah. Good to see. Good to see. And um, uh, with property investors, so you said you help property investors, and that's what we're about all about here on this podcast. Um, yes. And um, what are you seeing at the moment with uh, investors that you're talking to, and whereabouts are they buying, and and um, and for what reasons uh, are they looking to buy? Okay, so um, the the market that I deal mostly with is that sort of downsizes market, or the investors coming in from overseas or interstate. Okay. We're still looking for. Um, still looking for their return on their investment. Um, so um, they're looking for, you know, obviously in Sydney, 3% is the average. So they're looking to, you know, that 45 to 6%. I'm doing a lot of commercial stuff as well now. Right. Which you can get that 6 and 7%, yep. especially like that Central Coast, Newcastle sort of area. Yeah. Um, so you still can get those sort of returns there. But those clients that I have that are solely seeking for Sydney, they know they're not going to get the 6 and 7 and 8 percent. And they know they're not going to get that. They want a mixture of return on their investment, rental return, um, and capital gain. Um, uh, I've seen amazing capital gains in, in the Sydney market. Uh, people buying an apartment for a couple of million or, you know, a million dollars doing some renovations and all of a sudden it's, you know, made 20%. So, um, and, I, and I think, I think in, in the areas that I predominantly work in uh, and make that capital gain, um, people don't want to do the renovations, building costs are quite high. So they want something already done up and they're prepared psychologically to pay more. Mm. It's incredible how much people are paying for for a property that's been done up versus one that needs work. Um, yes, well, well, uh, because of the lack of trades and the and the cost of uh, renovating as well. Yes, we we've um, uh, we've seen that as well, where uh, a lot of people just prefer to pay that premium for for finished uh, properties, and. Um, and the the ones that need a bit of TLC, as they say, um, are, are really struggling. But um, it's um, and when it comes to houses versus units, uh, there's been a lot of talk in the market about, uh, especially in Sydney, that uh, uh, because of interest rates and um, and uh, people are still looking at being able to buy property. Um, 
but houses have had such a good run versus units that um, now it might look like it's um, the time for units to have their run. Is uh, Are you seeing that? Well, I, I guess it comes down to the client's budget, yep. firstly. And what I look at is what is your budget and what is it that you want to get out of that particular budget? I will always try and talk someone into a house over a unit. Um, for for, for you know, strata is getting really expensive. Um, and, um, you know, just not having that control that you would have in a house. So I would always try and, depending on budget and area that they want to be in, I would always try and get them the house over the unit. However, um, people are constrained by their budget and units are, um, what, what happens is that the housing market goes like this and then the unit market does a catch up. Yeah. So depending on where that stage is, um, I think we are almost at that catch up stage okay. where units have now um, gone, gone up. I remember two years ago, units were so lagging and I was like, right, I can't believe you can get a two bedroom unit with views of the harbour still for under a million. Now you yeah. can't. So, okay. so I think it's done that little bit of a catch up. Um, and it's the same with um, city versus regional, whether it's houses or units city then regional and yep. then you know and then and then that happens so regional goes back to its place and that's the same with units as well You've got houses and then units do that yep and then they then they do that yeah um that's and i think that's where we're at now where we, they're kind of like finding their place so um from an investor's perspective um it's a hard it's a hard question to answer, Owen, because it does depend on the client's whole portfolio, where they're at, um, how much money they've got, um, do they want to live in this property eventually? Um, where, where you know, if they're never going to live in that property and it's purely an investment, well then it's just numbers. Yeah. Um, and I would still always go for land. But then you've got these people who don't want to pay land tax, so they opt for the unit. So I've got to get into the psychology of the investor, um, and that, that's what I'm good at. I'm good at finding out who my client is and giving them what I know that they want long term. Um, okay. And, yeah, so um, did, that, did that answer your question? Yeah, or? yeah. No, no, it did because um, – uh, I, I I called it about you know, three years ago as well in terms of units uh, versus houses in Sydney, where um, because there was that exodus during um, uh, the the uh, especially in the first year or two of COVID outside of um, Sydney, yeah, houses in the burbs and out in the regional areas were just exploding, whereas uh, units actually had had a reduction in price. And, and you could just see it that as soon as uh, everyone started coming back to work and coming back to the city, units were just going to explode um, and um, they were really un underpriced uh, mm -hmm. in, in comparison. So, yeah, it, it's um, um, it was interesting to and that's why I wanted to ask the question to be able to see what's happening on the ground now from from your experience to to see where it's at. So no, it, it's it's uh, good to hear that it's um, had a bit of a run. As usual, the media uh, coming um, uh, coming to the party a, a bit late. Um, it's uh, usually the way as soon as it's in the media that it's happening. It's usually already happened um, six months ago. <laughs> yeah. Well. Look, 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 look at like um, the Southern Highlands of New South Wales and look at Byron Bay, um, Morlingwalk, that southern area. Of, uh, sorry that I'm always talking about New South Wales, but that's, that's all right. Where I am. Yeah, yeah, um, that's where you are. So, yeah. so you, you, look, you look at those areas, they sort of inflated, the prices inflated ridiculously. Um, like they've gone up like 30, 40, 50 percent in some areas, but then they've come down 20 percent, 25 percent, particularly like Byron Bay. Um, yep, yeah, Mollingwalk, Southern Highlands, they've come down in price. They, um, it's it's a classic supply and demand. The demands come down. Um, and there's always that correction. So this is what I feel every single day in the marketplace. I can feel the market 
going up and down and that's you know that's really important for investors to understand that um, you, you've, you've got to time the market no matter mm-hmm. what you're buying I think I think that's the crux of it you've got to time the market whether it's houses whether it's units whether it's city whether it's country whether it's um, regional whether it's you know um, the, it, and and it depends on what they're after. And, so, yeah. and also residential versus commercial. Um, you you you, yes. you yeah. You mentioned um, a couple of times that you've uh, uh, you're looking at um, been looking at commercial properties for clients. Uh, Especially what? around that Newcastle Central Coast area that I've been looking at, great returns and yeah. um, not not a lot of demand. So prices. Uh, uh, I, I, some really good bargains. Right. Okay. Um, and is that from which, a? From which a, I wish a, I'd have money because I would <laughs> buy. And is that from a rental return point of view? And 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 what type both, of commercial property? Both. Yeah. Both. And both are they more factory units or office? No, I'm like. A, so uh, the one that I looked at just on the weekend, which I think is amazing, it's uh it's right in the middle of Newcastle. It's uh, a, it's a, like an older sort of federation looking building okay. with uh, two apartments and uh, retail downstairs. Okay. And that's probably it's probably only returning about five percent, but it's been on the market for a little while. So if you get that at the right price and I'm um, been trying to negotiate this for a client that if you can get that at the right price at that six percent it's a really really good return because you've got the two apartments two four bedroom apartments and wow. and the retail the retail's not going anywhere yeah. um it's it's just it's a really good deal but there's this is just one of many it's one one i want to win lotto so i can buy all of these um <laughs> because um it's just amazing seeing all these properties and you just go, I need an investor. <laughs> it sounds like you might need to put your your prices up. Helping all these uh, investors. Yeah, your prices so that uh, uh, you can buy one for yourself. And um, but it sounds like you're doing great work for for all of your clients. So. Um, um, Thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's um, all right. Yeah, because we we find that uh, a lot of our clients um, are looking at commercial properties as uh, possibilities to be able to invest in. Um, but it's always getting the you know what type do I buy buy into, and um, you know it's um, so uh, certainly the the rise of the buyer's agent and a lot more getting into commercial property I think is a is a great thing for the property investor. So. Yeah. Um, if, if you can stay away from strata on commercial, that's yeah. better. Yeah. That's my big tip there. If you've got control over land and building, it yeah. is much, much better from a long-term uh, investment strategy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, um, uh, Valeria, we might leave it there. Um, it was um, great to have you on. And um, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, um, you mentioned your business name briefly before, but um, yeah, please give it a plug. Oh, okay. So um, House Hunters, you can yep. find me at househunters.com.au. Um, it, that's probably the easiest way to remember where to find me. Um, House Hunters, the famous American show, I'm not affiliated with it, but <laughs> we're House Hunters in Australia, househunters.com.au. Fantastic. Well, great having you on um, and it was great to catch up as well. And so. um, and uh, yes, if anyone wants to reach out um, to Valeria, um, please do. And um, we'll see you again next time, uh, whether you're listening or watching. Um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thanks, Alan.